Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I recently had a mate of mine ask me what was the best luxury car to buy for £5,000. We talked about loads of different options before he finally settled on his new car. So I thought, hang on a minute, this might actually make quite an interesting video. There's loads of choice out there. Here in the UK, £5,000 will actually get you a decent luxury car. But you need to be careful with some of it too. So I thought today we'd go through some options and potentially what to look out for too. Right, let's go shopping. So I'm going to open up the Ultrader website. Leave the make and the model empty, but set my maximum price to £5,000. Okay then, let's go through the brands. So we've got a Bath, no, Alfa Romeo, no. Audi. Could you buy a nice Audi A8 for £5,000? Let's have a look. You could probably buy a decent A6, but we're talking luxury, aren't we? So, hmm. There are 23 Audi A8s. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go price high to low. That way we might get... A bit more car for our money. I don't really like the look of that one with the black wheels, although the mileage is nice and low. It's only done 81,000 miles. Okay, this one's a 4-litre turbo diesel V8, and that's a cracking engine. It's a 2005-55, meaning it falls into the low road tax bracket, and it's only done 118,000 miles. For 4,990, that's such a lot of car. You're probably going to hear that phrase over and over again in this video. Such a lot of car for the money. But that really is such a lot of car for the money. I don't really like the wheels, it's only an SE, but it is the long wheelbase. Let's have a look inside. Two keys. That wouldn't be my first colour choice, to be honest, but it looks all right, doesn't it? They drive so well. This, this generation of A8. Look at the legroom in the back. Okay, I don't know an awful lot about the 4-litre, to be honest, but the 3-litre of that age can have timing chain issues. And the chain's at the back of the engine, so that's something to be wary of. That one's a 2959, no offers, air suspension fault. That's kind of the worry, isn't it, with this kind of car? Just because you can afford the purchase price doesn't mean that you can necessarily afford to, to run it. That one looks okay, though. That's a 4.2 turbo diesel as well. It's a 2006. Oh, look at that. The registration plate says brake horsepower. It's from Oxford, which for some reason I always like to see. That rear door's been painted, I would say, but it doesn't really matter on that kind of value car, does it? That, you would say, if that's got good service history, there's another three to five years life in that. Wheels could do with a refurb. It's got a sunroof. That's the kind of car that really gets me excited when I look at used cars. Because I just think I should sell all my stuff and just run something like that. I wouldn't personally buy one like that or that. I mean, look at the photographs. They're just terrible pictures. Go to a country park and take them there. That just looks really sorry for itself. They're doing themselves no favours there at all. Like, look at that, look at the difference. Granted, that's done 170,000 miles. The wheels are nice. But that is just a much better photograph. That looks really nice, you know. £4,000, such a lot of car. What does it say about it? Finished in grey with full leather interior, sat nav, heated seats, alloys, climate control, four wheel drive. Part X to clear, right, okay. Okay, let's go off the A8 then, what else can you buy? I wouldn't really recommend you buy a Q7. They are quite luxurious, but they can be quite troublesome. I can't believe you can buy these for 5,000 pounds though, it just strikes me as such a lot of car. Let's have a quick look at A6s. Let's see how much A6 you could buy. You're going to get the old shape one, something like a Le Mans Quattro. That would be all right, you know. Granted, it's not as luxurious as an A8, but still quite a nice looking car for five grand, that. You need to make sure that it's had its gearbox serviced a couple of times because that can be a weak point on that, that era of Audi. Okay, let's change brand. Let's look at BMW. Okay, BMW. Straight away, I'm excited. I've just seen a six series convertible. Okay, seven series. Now... You need to be... I wouldn't recommend buying a 7 Series for that value. I've fallen foul of this a few times myself, and I just think you can be into a whole world of pain. Oh, look at that, old E38. I shouldn't make these kinds of videos, because I just, just get so tempted myself. Although I wouldn't buy that one with a Pioneer subwoofer. What on earth? That looks very clean, actually. 2006-56, only four owners, 106,000 miles. There's loads of life in that. I spy with my little eye an M badge, a crooked M badge, no less. What are they thinking of? That actually looks quite tidy. It's a facelifted model, 
Is that an E65, is it? I lose track of BMs. That looks okay. The engine's bulletproof. It's just loads of fiddly, fussy electronics, air suspension, all that sort of stuff. But you'd like to think, forever the optimist, you'd like to think at that age and mileage, all those kinds of things will have been replaced already. That's what I always tell myself anyway. Bit of man maths. Okay, the 6 Series, that wouldn't be a bad option. Let's see how much 6 Series you can buy for five grand. Oh, look at that. Granted, the miles are a bit high, but it's a 645V8, 4.4. You need to watch for oil leaks on those. And bad timing chains, that can be another issue. But it's got red leather. I had one of those. I keep boring you to death about this, but I had a 645 with that interior and I loved it. Can you believe that that's a 19-year-old car? I think it still looks fresh. They're not even that bad on fuel. I used to get about 17, 18 round town and 28 on a run in mine. It wasn't bad at all. If you want to be a bit more sensible though, then go for a 630. Look at that. That's a 2005, so low road tax. It's only done 110,000 miles. That looks very clean. I like the interior. And I actually prefer that era of BMW 6 Series because you get an old fashioned key rather than one of those push button things. I like that. Really cool car that. So £5,000 for a luxury coupe. What else have we got? Okay, so other brands, what have we got? We've got Cadillac, no, Chevrolet. Ah, don't laugh now, but what about the 300C? Granted, they're not that luxurious, but if you've never had anything nice, I say that in, in a nice way, I'm not trying to be offensive. If you've never had anything decent, you would think that the 300C was quite a luxurious car. Let me explain. That one there has obviously been used as a wedding car, not that that's a bad thing. I mean, look at that, 4795, that's a 2006 3.5 V6. That's quite a good engine. I had that one myself. It's in quite a nice gunmetal grey colour. You see, the interior from afar is quite luxurious. Far from luxurious, but luxurious from afar. It has the chassis and bits and bobs from an old E-Class, so it is quite reliable. That actually looks okay. They've got the original grill there by the looks of things. Sunroof, heated seats probably, memory seats, they do come with it all. That'll be high road tax unfortunately, that'll be £600 a year. 3.5 V6, it'll do 90 miles per gallon around town and 30 on a run. I wasn't far off there, was I? £630 a year to tax, and it says it'll do 35 miles per gallon on a run. That really isn't bad, and it's probably ULOS, well it is, it's ULOS friendly. Now if you want something a bit more economical, then they do a 3 litre turbo diesel, and that is an old Mercedes Daimler 3 litre diesel. And again, quite reliable. You can have issues with oil leaks and um, oil cooler issues, but generally on the whole, they're not bad. That's a 2009, that's quite a late one, and it's a Lux. I don't like the wheels, but they're a bit old hat now, aren't they? But for four and a half grand, what do you want? They do drive very well, they ride nicely. I would probably avoid this one, someone's pimped it out. I don't like the aftermarket steering wheel, I don't like the wheels, I don't like the mats, and it's on KISS FM. That's probably been owned by a pimp or a drug dealer. Okay, what else? Is it Citroën? Ah, what about? What about the C6? There are only four of them available for £5,000, and it's a bit of a, a bit of a left-field choice, this, but I couldn't do a video about luxury cars and not include the very weird C6. It's got a 2.7 litre turbo diesel V6, which is the same engine as used in the early Range Rover Sports and Land Rover Discoveries. And on the Citroen, I don't think they had the, uh, the, that same bearing issue with the, uh, the crankshaft, I don't think. It's an ugly car, isn't it? But it's quite weird. Well, very weird. So eccentric. And they are very comfortable, as you can imagine. That's very tidy, actually. 2008 58, and it's done 118,000 miles. I need to buy one of those and get one on the channel, don't I? Perhaps stick it on the Raffle Shack website afterwards. That's quite cool in a funny sort of way, and I, as you well know, it's fairly well documented, detest French cars. But I would have something like that, because it's quite quirky. What else? Dacia, Deu, no, Daimler, no, Datsu, no. You're not going to get a decent Daimler for five grand. No, they're too old. As nice as that is. Oh, Buxton car No, it's not in Buxton. As nice as that is, it's just too old. It'll be rusty, won't it? Bit of class though, that, isn't it? Bit of old school class. That's cool, actually. Realist, you can't run around in one of those on a daily basis. For £5,000, that can't be a daily, can it? Dodge, Fiat, Ford, no. 
Hyundai. Have you seen those new adverts for Hyundai? They're trying to force me into saying it a different way. It's like, okay, if you don't like the way I say it, I'll just buy something else. How about that? Hyundai. Honda, now, what about the old legend? The old leg end. There are four. Yeah, I thought you'd get one of these for five grand. That's a 2009, so it's the newer shape legend. It's an 09, and it's only done 88,000 miles. A bit like the C6, that would be quite a left field choice, wouldn't it? It does look a bit like a big Accord, but it's quite a handsome car, that, I think. I like the twin exhaust. I think, didn't they also do a coupe as well? That will be bulletproof as well. You just won't have any issues with that. It's an EX, so you should have all the toys on it. There you go. Heated leather seats. Sat nav reverse camera, probably. That has got all the bells and whistles. Look at that leather as well. That looks in really good condition. What a lot of car for four and a half grand. That wouldn't be a bad option, would it, joking apart? Sorry to interrupt, but I need to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Now, if you haven't heard of Surfshark, Surfshark are a VPN service provider, so they help to keep you safe while you're online. It protects you so that all your data and your details are safe, including your IP address, so cyber thieves can't view it. It's also handy if you watch lots of streaming sites such as Netflix. If you're in a foreign country and your favourite TV show isn't available in your region, with Surfshark you can change your location settings and you can watch all your favourite TV shows and films. It's a really handy feature. It's great if you're based here in the UK, but your favourite TV show or film is only available in the US. With Surfshark, you can just change your location settings. In addition to that, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can spin at your bandwidth and make your device run much more smoothly. You can download the app very easily from the App Store, and you can use it on an unlimited number of devices. It's cheap and easy to use. We're all online a huge amount of time these days, and you just don't know how much information you're putting out there. Especially if you frequently use public Wi-Fi spots, such as fast food restaurants, airports, train stations, that sort of thing. Since I've been using Surfshark, touch wood, I've never had my bank account hacked into, my credit card details stolen, none of that sort of stuff. If you click the link below in the video description, which is surfshark.deals forward slash hypecortos, and use the promo code hypecortos, you'll get 83% off and three months extra, totally free. And we're talking a couple of pounds a month here, so don't think it's some big expensive commitment, because it isn't. So if you do online banking, online shopping, or you just want to watch your favourite TV show or film from another region, then definitely check out Surfshark. Right, more luxurious cars. Okay, so we were in Honda, you can't have something like a, uh, what's that Hyundai called, the Sonata, that's not really a luxurious car. The chassis is dreadful. It does look like a lot of car for the money, don't get me wrong, but they're not great to drive. It's like, it drives like an American rental car from the 90s. You'll know exactly what I mean by that. Honda, nope. I've got an Honda, an Honda Jazz. Have you? All right, terrific. Isuzu, no. Jaguar. Jaguar. This is where it gets interesting. You've got, basically, the XF or the XJ. Now the XJ, oh look at that. That's the last of, 2002, last of that, uh, what is it, the X308? X308, isn't it? Is it? I lose track. I think it's the X308. That looks cool, doesn't it? Again, realistically, you can't daily drive one of those. Look at the rust on it. Nice old thing, but not in this country. Might be better off buying a Japanese import or something like that. For £5,000, so this isn't a bad option. That's CNC cars. Bought a car off them recently. They're only around the corner. That is a, did they call that an X358? So it's a facelifted XJ with that new grille and the indicators in the wing mirrors. It's a sport premium. I don't really like how somebody's done the wheels in titanium or charcoal or whatever. I'd have those done back in silver. It's from Scotland originally, so I'd watch out for rust. But I didn't realise you could buy those for five grand. It has the same 2.7 litre turbo diesel V6 as the Range Rover Sport, which is the same as the Citroen C6 I just showed you. I can imagine how that drives right now. You want to make sure it's had a timing belt done, a gearbox service, all that sort of stuff. And the air suspension can cause you some grief, but a lot of these cars on this short list all have air suspension, so it's just one of those problems you're going to have to face if you want a luxury car for five grand. I really like that. To be honest though, I think you're probably better off with a three litre petrol. It'll be you less friendly, all that sort of stuff. Can you buy a decent one? Let's have a look. That's an air. Look at that. 2004, granted, so it's 19 years old, but it's only done 83,000 miles. The three litre petrol, they're a chain driven engine and they are bulletproof. 
It's had a bit of paint there, I would say. That's something else you need to watch out for. They're an aluminium body, but they still rust, or technically it's not rusting, is it? But it's the paint bubbles and there's some sort of corrosion going on there. So don't be pedantic and say, oh, it's not really rust, It's because it is kind of rust. That looks really tidy, doesn't it? What wheel, what tyres have they gone with? That is a Rapid, never heard of it. Wooden wheel, heated seats. That's a cool car. Very cool. Realistically though, for £5,000, you're probably better off going for an XF. Let's have a look. So you've got either a 2.7 litre turbo diesel or later the 3 litre turbo diesel and they're very good, but they have a timing belt and you can have issues with DPFs, EGRs, all that sort of stuff. So if you're gonna do a lot of miles, stick with the diesel, but if not, then I'd go for one of the petrols. Now they do the 3 litre V6, the same as the XJ that I've just showed you, or a 4.2 litre V8, and both are really reliable. Let's have a look then at, hmm, what, what catches my eye here? That one's done a lot of leg, hasn't it? Nope, okay. 3 litre turbo diesel V6 portfolio. Now the portfolio is the top spec, so that will have a Alcantara headlining, heated steering wheel, heated seats. That would be the one I'd go for, to be honest. At the very minimum, you need a premium luxury. I'd avoid luxury because they don't even have heated seats. Let's have a look at that then. So that's a 2011, done 127. So the miles are a little bit high. I like the wheels. It's got Xenons with the headlamp wash. Such a lot of car, that, for the money. If you go for a diesel, you need to make sure the time belt's been done, the gearbox has been serviced, standard stuff, really. I quite like that. Being a Jaguar, you'll get the odd error message, probably water and fuel, gearbox fault, all that sort of stuff. It's probably down to a dodgy battery. But if you maintain them properly, use premium fuel, take them for a long run once or twice a month, then you should, touch wood, be okay. Let's have a look at petrols then. Let's narrow this down a bit. Because personally, there are only five available, but I would go for a petrol XF. We've got this one here, that's an 08 4.2 litre V8. It will be a bit thirsty, that, so you might be better off going for, oh, look at that, 3 litre V6 petrol. Unfortunately, I mean, you can't have it always, can you? You won't have any DPF issues or EGR issues, but they are in the high road tax bracket, so the road tax will be £615 a year. But it'll do 18, 90 miles per gallon around town, 35 on a run, if you're steady. They're not bad. That one's got a cloudy headlamp, but you could find one on eBay, couldn't you? Twin exhaust. They also sound good. That 3 litre V6 sounds very good. I hate to see saggy nets like that. That's not a joke, by the way. I just don't like to see it. Smart key battery low. See, you'll have all these kinds of messages on, probably. Depends how fussy you are, doesn't it? But for five grand, well, four and a half grand, you could do an awful lot worse. So, so far then, based on what we've seen, I would either go for a BMW 6 Series, which is only a two-door, so it might not suit everybody. An Audi A8 or a petrol Jaguar XF. What else have we got? Kia, no Lancia, Land Rover. Let's have a quick look. I really wouldn't recommend you buy a Range Rover for five grand because it's just going to end in tears, but let's play the game. Oh, that looks nice. I mean, it's an old TD V6. They're, they're not very good news, those. Not V6, sorry, TD6. They sound awful. That looks nice. That's a 3.6 TD V8, the headlamps could do with a buff. But, that looks quite cool, doesn't it? It's the later model, so you've got the, the key goes in there rather than down here. Heated steering wheel. Oh, it's a Vogue SE. The seat's a bit, a bit manky, isn't it? But you could get that repaired or replace it with one off eBay, perhaps. Armrest is ripped. How heavy was the guy that was driving that, or girl? How much was he leaning or she leaning on that armrest? Okay, right, I probably wouldn't go. I probably wouldn't advise you go with that. Wow, look at that. Chrome Fest. Good job I'm not epileptic, isn't it? Why, why would you ruin a nice clean Range Rover with all that chrome that you bought off of eBay? I was going to say, it's got no privacy glass. It's got the original small wheels. That looks nice and original. And then somebody has ruined it. You would have magpies chasing you all over the place in that, wouldn't you? It's got a cheap kiss reg. I don't like that. They've replaced the nice original grille with a chrome one, chrome mirrors, that's just tacky, chrome vent. The first thing I would do if I bought that, which I probably would, because it's a 3.6 TDV8 Vogue, I'd rip all that chrome off, because it is just horrendous. They look so much better with no privacy glass, don't they? Hmm, that seat's in better state than the other one, isn't it? 
than 157. No, it's too high. You're asking for trouble there, if you want my honest opinion. Oh, Giveny. No, it's too old. Ah, Rimini Red. Was it Rimini Red? I think it was Rimini. Ferenz Red came later, didn't it? I think it was Rimini. That looks cool, doesn't it? I don't like the chrome mirrors. And I think the wiper motor's about to break. That's quite a common issue, actually. The plastic cog in the rear wiper. Nerd alert. The plastic cog in that wiper motor there can just, uh, the teeth on the cogs can, can smooth off over time, so you end up with a saggy wiper. And nobody likes to see that. But no, don't, don't buy a Range Rover for five grand. Oh, a P38. Don't like the colour of that, but I do quite like the... Oh, look at the old London taxi in the red phone box. Proper little Englander, isn't he? That's quite cool, isn't it? I need to get a P38. Hmm. That one straight away looks a bit low, so I'd avoid that. Oh, and it's 18 and a half grand. Okay, forget Land Rover, forget that. Right, what's next? Lancia, no, Kia, no. Okay, Lexus, now we're talking. This is both, this is where luxury and reliability collide. What are our options? Okay, so you need something like, I think straight away we can discount the LS400 because it's too old. The LS430, as I've demonstrated many times, I know it's a Lexus and they're well built, but at this age, they need a lot of money piling into them. So I wouldn't go for one of those. Although that looks quite nice. No, forget that. What does that leave us with then? The other oh, GS. Okay, will you get a new, ah, oh, there you go. That, I know it might look like you borrowed your grandfather's car, but trust me when I say this, you will just love driving that. Something like an SEL, three litre V6, it's bulletproof. You just won't have any issues. That's 4995 and it's only done 64,000 miles. There's just so much life left in that. I don't like the cheap private plate, personally, but that might just be me. Someone's put the wrong wheels on that. That doesn't sit right, does it? It is a bit of a big lump, but they're just so effortless. Heated and cooled seats. You get loads of options that you just wouldn't get from another manufacturer, for that money anyway. Memory seats. This is the trouble, isn't it? My heart would say Jag XF, but my head would say Lexus GS300. Private seller in Romford. All right, brother. That looks quite cool, doesn't it? No privacy glass. Hmm. Come from Kent. Scratches on the back bumper, so that wants painting. It's not bad though, is it, that? And again, if you go for a decent spec, they all have this touchscreen, sat nav, reverse camera, all that sort of stuff. Quick tip for you if you're thinking of selling your car, vacuum out the passenger footwell mats and don't show your own feet and sweatpants in the picture. Quick tip. I just think that looks a bit unprofessional, personally. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. The Lexus GS has, to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, has this pop-out little thing here, this little panel with all the controls, which immediately makes you feel like James Bond. That's another reason to buy it. That one's got a Continental on. Okay, if you want my honest opinion then, so far, that's what you should buy, a GS, a GS300. Oh, there's a GS430. So that's basically the same car, but it has the 4.3 litre V8, which is superb. I might buy that. I, re <laughs> I really like that. Oh, I really shouldn't look on Autotrader, should I? It's dangerous. How cool is that? This is why in this country we're just so spoiled. That is a is a desirable car in my opinion. Wooden steering wheel, glorious V8 with 280 horsepower, all for five grand. Okay, that's what you should buy then. What are your other options? London Taxi International, no. MG, no. Mini, Mazda, Mercedes. Now this should be the go-to, shouldn't it? Straight away you think luxury car, you should be thinking Mercedes. I don't advise you buy an S-Class, although that's an S500. How cool is that? Hmm, bit of a chrome fest. <laughs> Forget that, no. Once again, I'm going to repeat the phrase, just because you can afford to buy it, doesn't mean you can afford it. Words to live by, really. I've been there, got the t-shirt. You know, that 3 litre turbo diesel is quite a good engine. Uh, well, apart from the oil leaks and the timing chain issue. But apart from that, it's quite a good engine. I quite like that. I, I lose track of Mercedes names. Is that the W221? 221, I think. 
If you go for a 2010 model, which I don't think you'll afford for five grand, then they have the Maybach style lights. There's an interesting fact for you. Wooden wheel, that's really nice actually. It's not silly mileage either, is it? 113. They are very complicated though, so no, I can't, I can't honestly recommend that you buy one of those for five grand. You're asking for trouble, really. What SL can you buy for five grand? You know what? You could do far... Mm, no. No, forget it. Forget it. I can't recommend. Although, mm, no, forget it. Mm, no. <laughs> Trying to convince myself there. R-Class, no, they're silly, aren't they? M-Class, no. GL, no. Ah, CLS. That would be an interesting car. I like the CLS. I think the Mark 1, like I'm going to show you, I don't think it's aged brilliantly. It looks a bit soggy, a bit Hyundai Coupe-ish. But for five grand, I'd have one. Again, a bit like the Jag, you could go with a 3-litre diesel or a 3.5-litre petrol, and you're probably better off with the petrol. A bit more reliable, no DPF issues, no EGR issues, and Sadiq Khan won't take the contents of your wallet every time you drive to work. So probably petrol. Although that diesel with 225 horsepower, I think it was. Let me test myself. They are a bit of a powerhouse. 221, not bad. Hit the crossbar there, didn't I? 4995, that looks quite cool actually. Don't like the black wheels, it looks a bit pimp my ride, but so much car for the money. Oh, look at that, that's got the facelifted interior. And two cup holders. This is the issue with this era of Mercedes. You see that warning light there? Right, right rear turn signal bulb gone. It might just be a bull, but more often than not, it's an electrical issue. So get used to warning lights if you want to buy a old Mercedes. Now there you go, right, 2005-55, so it's low road tax. That is the 350, the 3.5 V6 petrol. 272 brake horsepower, it goes very well, it sounds good. That looks very clean, actually. What's the mileage on this bugger? You know what, I take back what I've just said. I just said that they weren't aging particularly well, but that looks quite cool, don't you think? Every time you get in a CLS, you'll forget that the seat controls are down here. I do, anyway. You either look there or there on a Mercedes, not on the corner, on the right angle. It's only a four-seater, which is a bit of a negative, but you get this little secret compartment here. You press that little metal strip, and that pops up there, which will immediately make you feel like an international spy. So the CLS isn't a bad option, is it? Give us, give us, give us. E-Class? Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. It's low mileage, isn't it? That's a 2002, that's an old, old girl, isn't it? It's an E240, which means it used an old 2.6 litre V6, which, well, it wasn't particularly fast. It sounded nice, and it was quite reliable, but yeah, it's not a quick engine, that at all. I think horsepower wise, I think they were at 170 or something, I think, I'll check that in a second. You need to watch out for rust, but if you find one like that that's only done 40,000 miles, chances are it's probably been garaged. That's quite cool, you know, isn't it, in a funny sort of way? I like that. Proper old school Merc, isn't it, that? Hmm. Six owners, that's surprising. You'd have expected a low mileage example like that to have only had a couple. Ah, that's cheap. Chrome Motors Woodford. They're up on the, um, the road to Mac, aren't they? That's a new shape, 09. Only done 107,000 miles. You're probably going to have, they're not the quickest things in the world, those, and you're probably going to have DPF issues, turbo issues, all that sort of stuff. And I never liked how the seats were so flat. Kind of slide all over the place, there's no support at all. But a lot of car for five grand, isn't it? It's a bit German taxi, isn't it? But, hmm. So an E-Class is an option as well. I think over the, over, well, given the choice, I think I'd go for a CLS bit more interesting to look at. Right, what other brands are there then? Mercedes-Benz, Mazda, okay. Mini, no. Mitsubishi, no. Nissan, no. Thought you might have been able to get a an older Infiniti for five grand, but obviously not. Peugeot, 100% not. Perodua, no, thank you. Porsche. Let's have a look. You could buy a KN, couldn't you? Or a Cayenne. However you say it. Can you get one for five grand? You're probably best with a 3.2 V6. I mean, that looks like an awful lot of car for, for five grand. That's a 3.2 litre V6. They are quite a reliable engine. 
they're not the quickest things in the world. I think it's 250 horsepower. Mm. Not the best. Mm, the colour's all right, I suppose, isn't it? That one's a private cellar in Wilsdon. I don't think there's a nice road in Wilsdon. My mate used to live there and it wasn't... I never used to like to leave my car outside a house. Hmm. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I do like that generation of Porsche, though. No. Oh, an old turbo. No, forget that. <sighs> you can have issues with bore scoring and all that sort of stuff. They can count... They can also sound quite tappity, especially the V8s. That's why you're better with a 3.2 V6. Hmm. No, five grand, I think you're asking for trouble. You can buy them though, or, or the 3.2 V6 won't have things like air suspension, it'll just have standard coils, so there is less to go wrong. It's a roll of the dice though, that. I don't know if I'd spend my own money. Well, to be fair, I'd probably spend my own money on one, but I don't know if I'd recommend that you did. I wouldn't like you to lose your shirt and then blame me for it. Rover, should we have a look? What about a full partridge mobile? 3995. Lynn, can you call Tony Hares at the BBC? That's actually quite cool in a funny sort of way. Look at that. You know what, all jokes aside, if you drove that when it was new back in 1993, You'd arrived, I think. Sunroof, look at that. Anyway, what else have we got? We're running out of options here, I think, aren't we? Skoda, Skoda. You could buy a, a Skoda Superb, couldn't you? I really rate these. Whether you, whether you think that it's a luxury car or not, I don't know. It isn't really a luxury car, is it? It's a great car, but it's not really a luxury car. If you go for a top spec, is it the um, Lauren and Clement uh, edition? then they're quite good, but realistically, you're still going to look like a mini cab, aren't you? Mm, if you're going to be sensible, yes. But if you want a bit of flash, then no. Okay, right. Sangyong, Subaru, Sunbeam, Vauxhall, no. Toyota, no. Suzuki, Volkswagen. You could buy a Phaeton, but as I've demonstrated in recent videos, they are quite expensive. Not to buy, but to maintain and find parts for. You know what's funny? I remember some of these from when I was looking for a Phaeton three months ago, and the adverts are still live, which tells me they're not exactly a popular car. I mean, something like that, look, £4,800, so 2007 done 88. Looks very bright, that, doesn't it? Very straight. I like those wheels. It's quite classy, I think, that. Quite understated. I posted a photo of my old silver Phaeton and I captioned it, which I was quite proud of. Something like, um, inconspicuous consumption. I thought that's exactly what that is. You're in something that costs as much as an S-Class Mercedes, but nobody takes a second glance. But realistically, I couldn't recommend you buy one. They're, they're, too, they're too rare, you just won't find parts for them. It's a pity, really. No, forget that idea. So then, our last option comes from Sveria, Volvo. Okay, then we've got, there is only one really, luxury car, and that is the, where is it? The S80. There are 26. Now look at that. That's a 2008, 2.4 litre D5 SE Lux Geartronic. The gearbox, I think, is an Ace in Warner gearbox, so it does need a service at 80,000 miles, but they are quite reliable if you maintain them. It has a timing belt, which will need to be replaced by now. I'm not a big fan of that five-cylinder turbo diesel sound, but I know lots of you are, so I am in the minority there. Look at that interior. That looks so comfortable, doesn't it? I like the whole uh, floating dash business as well. That's quite cool, isn't it? I think I did a review of one of these a couple of months ago, the one that we had in stock. And I was impressed with it. They're not the sharpest to drive. It isn't a BMW 5 Series. It isn't as flash as a CLS, but it's a very good, comfortable car. Ah, that's a petrol. This one here in here in Aid Beige. 2.5 turbo. That will go like a scolded cat, won't it? What's the horsepower on that? That will be... 
Mm, 200, I thought it'd be more than that. 0 to 16, what was that? 0 to 16, 7.5 seconds. I thought it'd be a touch quicker than that. It's such a lot of car for four grand though. That is a big comfortable old smoker. What about a Mark 1? They're a bit old now, aren't they? Like that. The year 2000, X-Reg, 54,000 miles, 2.4 petrol. I think they had 170 horsepower, let me test myself. Oh, 140. Come on, Matt. How clean is that? 2,990 pounds. It's an ugly devil, isn't it? But sort of cool in a Scandinavian chic sort of way. I quite like that. Well, we're at the end of our list then, guys and girls. So I think, let's try and pick a winner, shall we? What would you have? Let me know in the comments below. Squeaky chair here. I would go for, with my own money. Oh, it's tough, isn't it? The thing is, at this kind of end of the market, you need to find a nice one. So you might, you might dream of owning a Jaguar XJ or an XF, but I would go and look at half a dozen cars. If you find a, a Lexus GS300 that's in mint condition, and the Jaguar XF you look at is a bit ropey, then go for the Lexus. I think at this price point, you can't afford to be too choosy. So I would narrow it down. I'd go and look at a Lexus GS, maybe look at that GS430 because I'm sad. I'd look at the Jaguar XF. I might, I might go and look at something like the CLS. Hmm. Okay, they're the winners then. We've got a joint winner. It's the Jaguar XF and the Lexus GS. The runner up, I think, in this would be the CLS or the E Class. I think that's it. Hmm. See what I mean though? There is a lot of choice. You just need to make sure that it's got things like both sets of keys, full history, gearbox service done, cam belt done if it has one, all that sort of stuff. And as I always say, make sure you keep a couple of grand back for any repairs. So your budget for a car might be five, but you need a couple of grand in a rainy day part because you are playing with fire with this stuff. There are no two ways about it. So just make sure you don't get your fingers burned basically. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.